Hey guys, so I'm here at Wave Hill, and we are standing in the Palm House. This is part of their conservatory here. And there's a tropical house, a palm house, and a succulent house. So it's closed to the public, but we got in, and we're just gonna do a little tour, so come on. This field trip is powered by my partners at Wildling, which is an independent company that really rethinks footwear. The shoes are super lightweight and flexible. I got ones made from organic cotton and Japanese washi fabric. And the soles are the best part. They are inspired by Japanese ninja boots, so you really feel as if you're connected to the earth. The company is environmentally responsible through and through, which aligns with our mission here at Plant One On Me. So I encourage you to check them out at wildling.shoes. So one of the things that I really remember about this place is that it's so highly organized and everything is tightly put together and compact. So Martha, who had brought us in, shared that there's probably over a thousand plants here and you could see that it's so neatly organized and arranged. So here we're actually seeing some Haworthias, Haworthiopsis, and probably some Gasteria over here behind me. And look at these, this really goes to show you how clump forming Haworthia and Haworthiopsis can actually be. I mean, look at these large clumps right here. This is Haworthia mahanii. Haworthiopsis sordida. This looks like a much thicker, darker green one. You could probably find that under bushes and in South Africa. Haworthia truncata. This is a, a favorite one for a lot of uh, collectors. It's fan-shaped. It's more fan-shaped than some of the others, which have a little bit more of a, a circular kind of bird's nest look. And then you could see some of the Sansevieria or the Dracaena in the back. So that looks like a, a Kirky eye. This one says Sansevieria grandis, kind of looks a little bit more like a whale fin in the back, the really thick one. And look, you see that this parva is about to bloom. So this is one of the grassier ones. And then this one is Singularis, which is one of the bat snake plants. They're called bats because I think they look like a, a bit like a baseball bat. Unbelievable, right? These look like some of the uh, tree aloes. And you could see that some of them grow up on stalks like this. Some grow a little bit more compact to the ground. This is interesting too. You have this ponytail palm and then you have all these succulents that are planted in the base. So this is like a dikea. And then you have these, I believe these are senecios, blue chalk sticks. I uh, didn't want to blow over the gasteria here. So gasteria and haworthia and haworthiopsis are often combined together. But these are ox tongues. Gasteria distigia. And then here's Gasteria obtusa. It's a variegated version. This one doesn't even have a species name. It says subspecies number three. And then I have one of these. Looks a little different though. Gasteria carinata. I guess this is a different variation, varicosa. You could see this one is like buried almost in the pebbles. I think this is Armstrongii, another one that I really like the look of. And then this moves over to the Euphorbia, which is a genus that really ranges in looks. So you have something as wonky as Euphorbia platyclata, which is also called dead man's fingers. And then you have something like Euphorbia lactea. So they have cultivars known as white ghost, and they're almost a milky white. And then you have something like this, which is a variegated Euphorbia milii. This 
This is one of my favorite genera of all time of succulents, and it's Crassula. And we might recognize Crassula from the jade plants that we have. So, you know, a lot of the jade plants that we know are like a Crassula ovata. This is also another variation of Crassula ovata. And you can see some of the jade plants in, in bloom here. And some of the variegated varieties. But crassas come in many different shapes. And you could see here Crassula tecta, one of my favorites. I don't know if you could see that one down there, this one right here. It's kind of got a snake skin kind of look. Hard to see, right? <laughs> probably part of what, what the plant tries to do in order to protect itself. And this is Crassula falcata. I think this is, might be called airplane plant. But you can see it has these wings. And there's a lot of hybrids with Crassula. And a lot of times it's hybridized with a Crassula falcata. This one's Crassula arda. It looks like another one that I know. This one's the same, Crassula arda. It almost looks a little bit like a moon glow. Crassula Susanne, which is another one that I've seen on the market for sale. And then it looks like they have um, some of the aloes here. And they are about to bloom. So aloes are the type of plant that will stick out a long flower stalk, as you could see. And they're usually really brilliant colors. So they're pinks, they're oranges, they're yellows. And unlike agave, aloe will constantly re-bloom. Re agave, once it blooms, it starts to die back. So you get the benefit of having the aloe to re-bloom if you are into aloes. This one, aloe rahii. And I particularly love the aloes that stay a little bit closer to the ground and have kind of the flecking and the mosaic patterns on. This is a new one for me, aloe verdonie. And it has almost a blackish, brownish, purplish color with, again, some of those mosaic patterns on. Aloe perula. It almost looks like a sea creature, something that you'd see on the bottom of the sea. These are some of my favorite, these mosaics. This is aloe variegata. There's a plant that I really like called gaster aloe, and it's a combination of a gasteria and an aloe. And I am not quite sure, but I think that hybrid was probably done with an aloe variegata. And I think it's, it's a nice meaty aloe. And this one has a different coloration than the one I have, but this is probably given a lot more sun. So it has this kind of dark bluish green color to it that you know, mine at home doesn't have. I'm not familiar with this one either. There's a lot of new ones here for me. I'll have to look that one up. This one's a pretty famous one too. This is called the Watch Chain Crassula. Going back to the crassulas. Here's a great example of some of the hybrids that aloes do. So this is pink blush. So a lot of hybrids have been done by Kelly Griffin. I don't know if this is a Kelly Griffin hybrid, but I think some of the hybrids are just as exquisite as some of the species. This is probably another hybrid. Very nice. Another popular succulent that I often see in container plantings is aeoniums, which are pretty neat. And I, I want to point this out too. Look at this, in Carcia formosa, this you can see are beneficial insects. So the way that they're being proactive here and being able to keep insects at bay and, and the way that they're probably allowing this to look as good as it does is using beneficial insects.
which is always nice to see. Oh, I didn't miss, I totally missed this. Look at how beautiful this is, all in bloom. Kind of an unusual hanging basket plant. I think these are the moonstones. This is a type of graptopetalum. The last time I was here, it was not this full. But I think they look like little jelly beans or little candies. A lot of the ones that you see over here are echeverias. And for me, a lot of echeverias start to get a little leggy. And you can see they get these stalks. So some folks would say, mm, that doesn't look as uh, exciting to me. And they want them to be as close to the ground as possible. But that's just kind of, you know, some people expect that the echeverias, I think this is an agavoides that they will stay down like this, but some will actually start growing these long stalks. And again, you'll see the long flower stalks sticking out. So these look like sedums over here. Those look like sedum burritos. And again, these are types of plants that will start to grow some stalks. So for example, like this, they don't always stay so close to the ground. Oftentimes you'll have to keep on cutting them back if you don't want them to grow, you know, long and leggy like that. So there is some maintenance involved in wanting to keep these looking as um, cute as when you first bought them. Agave. So this is the uh, very famous Agave Victoria Regine. It has those white edgings. It literally looks like it has been hand painted. And again, Agave, one of the ways that it differs from aloes, which they're often confused with, is that with Agave, it blooms once and then it starts to die off, but will start creating some offsets. I have one of these at home. This is a type of cultivar aurea. Uh, this is uh, also an agave, Victoria Regine, but it has this yellowish green tone to it. Agave striata, so it's much more grassy than some of the others. And the ones that you don't want to stay on the, you want to stay on the good side of these plants, these are dikeas. And when we were in Thailand, dikeas were huge. So they like the spiky versions, because I have to say that some of these are actually spikier than most cacti. Yes, they come from Brazil. Most of them are native from Brazil. Wow, these but are... these are all the hybrid from, uh, in Thailand. These are impressive teeth. Like, you yes. could really rip something yeah, off yeah. of this. Like the teeth, the, yeah. the bigger teeth, the, the better. The, the, yeah. the better. Crossing and hybridizing dikeas was like a really big thing that they were doing at that moment. I don't think the dikea fever has come and hit the United States at any time soon, but it's, it's probably because in our small little apartments, you don't want to get on the bad side of these guys. This is a great example of a peperomia. Kind of seems like it's lost in this collection. So this looks like a Peperomia dulliberformis. I can't tell you whether that's true or not. Let me just see if I could get the tag out. No, it's Asperula. So, but it's in the same grouping. Dulliberformis ferrarae Asperula. They have these more taco-shaped leaves with the windows on the top. And actually, this one looks like it's going to start blooming very soon. You see some of these new blooms just kind of coming up. They'll have that characteristic like rat tail look on their blooms. Another fabulous genera of plants are the Kalankoe. You could see that some of them have this felted look. This is Kalankoe areophila and this is Kalankoe tomentosa. They're commonly called chocolate soldiers or panda plant. They have a different kind of variations. Colin Coey are probably some of the more resilient plants in the, uh, the houseplant market. 
This is also called propeller plant. This is a type of Senecio. If you remember some of my older episodes on 365 days of plants, a lot of the Senecios have been kind of blown up and the genus has been moved to like Curio and also Capuzia. So there's been some kind of movement in there. It's very hard to keep track of what's what. Xerocissios danguii. So this is uh, one of those succulent vining plants. And then if you actually grow it from seed, it will form a caudex at the base. Most of the time when we see them in the houseplant market, it's actually taken by a cutting. And so it'll probably never develop that caudex, but they start to vine and like to lean on something. And what I've noticed is that if you don't let their tendrils grip or grab on something, the tendrils will start to die back. So you can probably stake it or lean it up against a, a bushier plant. I've always found these to be a little bit more challenging if you're planting them in a group of succulents. These always seem to be more temperamental than some of the others that I've had this genera. This one looks like it's gotten a lot of sun. So this is an example of one of the Senecios that has been recently turned into a different genus. I forgot. So some of them are Curios, some of them are Capuzias, and some of them are Kleinias. And this is now considered a Kleinia Petraea. Very good and underrated hanging basket plant. I really love this one. This is so neat to see one of the older Dioscorias. So you can see this is a, a pretty impressive caudex on this plant. These could get quite large. This is Dioscoria elephantipes, and they are, looks like it had just been past bloom. Don't fall over that. <laughs> So you could see this one, slightly different caudex. He seems to have this. So sometimes these will just um, die back and you'll just have the caudex and then all of a sudden you'll have all these green sprouts right again. Looks like you know your plants. Somewhat. There's a lot of new ones here. It's been a while. I thought this is the same thing, but they seem like two different things. There's a pocket for item. Then there's the Graptopetalums that look like that. Yeah, then yeah. Yeah, then there's a the Graptovaria. So, you know, labels, sometimes they disappear. Yeah, well, and then we were just saying that, you know, sometimes, like, you can't keep up with all the changes in but, the... Oh, I don't bother that. Yeah. Like, you just can't visit them at home. The kind of names are constantly changing. Yeah, every time you... Uh, it, I, you, I, you know, I start the system and I know. Going to that, that's why synonyms are always so good. <laughs> some <happens. laughs> So you can see some of these have just been in bloom. These, these are Falcarias, so these are, you know, you see the tiger jaws here. And then these are the living stone plants. So you'll see that there's a lot of lithops here. And these will freely interbreed with one another. So when they're all flowering, I'm not sure how, uh, <laughs> how they keep them um, from in intermingling with one another, but they will hybridize quite readily. Yeah, that's an example. They're all sort of seed that I just collected random. Right, and you know. they probably, you don't know, you can't really no, you ever can't, identify you, no, them. you can't tell them what is what kind of. Yeah. Which is kind of fun. Yeah, yeah you know what? It's uh, I'm, I'm hoping to, like, you know, there's one, that reddish one. Yeah. And these greenish ones. Yeah. I'm going to try to kind of separate them, you know, like just to try to collect seeds of those. But yeah. But there's no guarantee that what's going to, what, you know, what they will come up. All right. Yeah. And you probably have so much other work that you're, you're actually doing that. <laughs> like, it's like, it'd yes, have to be something on the side. The job. I mean, a lot of these yeah. plants, they don't like being disturbed in the winter. Yeah. But that's kind of time when I have time to work on most of this stuff. Yeah. So this is fascinating. I've never seen this that's before. Bulbini. Bulbini. Yeah. Mesambrian or Mesambrianthes? Mes yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. So really beautiful. Bobini, the Bobini plant? No. no, those so really beautiful those windows. Thing, uh, the, the grassy thing in front of you, the orange flowering? Yeah. So that's another Bobini. Really? Yes. There are some that look like almost like agaves, actually. Fascinating. But, um, more like aloes rather than agave, yeah. 
So you have some that look like more like a living stone, then you have some that look like these grassy. Exactly, exactly, wow. Yeah. yeah, that one is a great plant to use in the garden. I always use that, you know, sort of divide it and plant it outside. Yeah, yeah. So that one flowers kind of late summer into yeah. fall. Uh, well, that just is a really interesting. I mean, when and when does this flower? That one. You know, it hasn't flowered in a year or two. There's yeah. one more plant here. Yeah. Um, it, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I have pictures of it when it flowered one time. Yeah, but the flower looks exactly like that so one then. They sort of, they're really yeah. whitey. Yeah, okay. Really long stem. They, yeah. they, you know, it's a lily family plant. Uh -huh. So flowers are sort of typical, you know, uh, like aloes or uh, other plants. So yeah. anyway, so it's kind of fun. You know, my goal is always having a... Uh, Especially the plants that are hard to find, at yeah. least two. Yeah. Like uh, I always try to kind of move them around, like see, uh, you know, things sometimes they don't live. Yeah. Just having at least one for the backup, look like just to. Always a so. smart, <laughs> always a smart option. Yeah. And I noticed that you're doing a lot of integrated pest management here. Is it more a proactive approach or? More or less. I mean, yeah. it, you know, succulents kind of, a, there are about like 600 different kind of plants here. Mm -hmm. And also the way our greenhouses are with the gravel on the sort of benches. Mm -hmm. uh, so some, uh, there are always some kind of a uh, bug mealy or yeah. whatever like that live in the gravel. So they come back up. The biggest problem is root, root mealy. Oh, that's your biggest problem? Root mealy is the biggest problem. Wow. Is, yeah. that, is that because of the, the, the substrate that you're using? Or why do you think that's I the think biggest that issue? I think the biggest problem in succulents anyway. Really? Yes, okay. in our region. We, okay. You buy them from no matter you know who the grower is. Yeah. So they, the way things are, I mean, like you really have to turn them around. Uh huh. So if I, I mean, if, if I open up one of those pots, they probably are covered with the mealy bug inside. In the root. In the root. So like, wow. if, as long as I am able to kind of work around them, like about once a year, repart them, lose yeah. the soil. Yeah. Uh, they're good. Okay. So when this one to sit in the same container for like more than a year and a half or something, two yeah. years. I mean, some things here I don't get to them for years. Yeah. Like, um, so, I mean, I just test the sort of a, because it's, uh, we don't really use much pesticides in mm -hmm. here. You know, we mm -hmm. only use like, uh, right now I'm using rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. I see like uh, mealy at the stems of echeveria mm -hmm. and these bacteria kind of things. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, uh, the, uh, the main, uh, oh, you, we use it like it's a rubbing alcohol or mm -hmm. uh, soapy water. Well, the, the, the fact that you said that root mealies might actually be one of the most common problems here is, so, is news to me because I know people always see the, the mealy bugs, the cottony mealy bugs, or even uh, scale on top of their leaves. Yeah. But maybe people, like by that time, maybe they toss them out and they never check in the roots. Uh, if you're gonna see something, and maybe you, are you interested yeah, in see something? Yeah, I'd love like, to. Yeah, I'd love to. Let me see. Like, uh, sorry. Uh, like some of these. Uh, Blow our mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So, so, like these guys, you know, these these can stay in the same part for a while. Uh huh. I don't know how easy it's gonna oh. come out, but that's okay. Uh, this one's not this? bad actually. Okay. And this will. So you're gonna see that like lining up against the uh, like like white fuzzy stuff. Uh huh. Like, but this is just roots, right? Yes, here. just roots. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these guys are actually good to sort of their yeah. roots are really strong, and I need to redo them anyway. Okay. So yeah, you know what? Before I pull one more plant out, I'm gonna do one I was supposed to do. Okay. See what is inside that one. Okay. So so, so you do this. Uh, you try to do this regularly, like a little maintenance of looking well, that's at. The sort of goal. Yeah. Uh, like, if, um, I mean, some things like these guys could be uh, undisturbed for years. Yeah. So he did most of them, uh, like about like two months ago. There's dates on the back of them. Yeah. Um, so they, these were done after like maybe, I would say like after three to five years. Uh huh. Uh, but then. It all depends on what plant it is. Right. Some things sort of need to be done more. Like echeverias, almost they need to be done every year. Yeah. Uh, where uh, some things like uh, you can sort of leave them longer in the same container. Yeah. Um, yeah, with my experience, I mean, that's the kind of like um, sort of changing the soil or uh, loosening up the so uh, roots kind of stuff. Yeah. It's more helpful than anything else. That's also, great. Um, yeah, one of these should be a good candidate. Let's see. I mean, first of all, I need to figure out like 
Um, these are two different things. I yeah. don't remember. <laughs> don't remember which one's which. Yeah, no, this one is definitely bucket item. This one, like, you know, the labels sometimes break. Yeah. So, something not bad. I think you're getting surprised. You're surprised with yourself. <laughs> So the roots are not, you know, so great. That's why the plant is not so happy. Mm. Um, this is kind of time to restart them, like a lot of things. Like, uh, let me find another label. That's good. It is a bacteria, but it's a cultivar. Okay. Yeah. So, so that one is bacteria, and mm. it's kind of. A so you refresh the soil and everything then? Yeah. So yeah. that's. I mean, this wasn't done in like four or five years mm -hmm. or something. So I'm going to take, I mean, these roots are not really happy. Yeah. So you're going to cut it or how are um, you going to? Yeah, there's a good chance. So when I'm doing this, I will probably keep one or two pieces as it is. Yeah. Because they have some roots, but maybe not a whole lot. Yeah. Um, but uh, I will cut uh, cut some and restart them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some, some of the pocket videos that I did this morning, they are sitting there. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the goal that we like, you know, when you cut them, back, like 80% of them do easily. Yeah. So but still like, you know, just making sure that uh, there is a backup plan. Yeah. So, and also the, uh, in terms of, you know, this is kind of a, a collection, there's like nice to kind of, a, uh, it gives you sort of a, different perspective about the plant, how it's going to grow naturally in the longer run. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of succulent, they grow this long stem, whatever, but they look on their best when they're stemless and just really close to mm. the container. Right, we were just talking about that, how like, when you buy them in the store, they're usually yeah, stemless. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's sort of a, and they, I mean, they look really interesting, you know, best when they look at their best. Yeah. So maybe my lucky day, I'm not dealing with any mealy today. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, like, you're, you're selling it to us, and then you, you open it up, and there's nothing there. <laughs> they heard we were coming. <laughs> I think a lot of folks who see you, like, how, how could he actually even want to pull that out? I you know. know. So that, I mean, that's, these things, you really need to open them up. Yeah. Perfectly true in gardening. Yeah. A lot of things you really, sometimes, like, when you're teaching a class, I mean, I used to teach, and my background is teaching. A lot, of that, a lot of things you just have to do them in a certain way, like yeah. So this one doesn't. Do, I, 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 I don't know. See, like a, I, I see maybe is this potentially eggs? Yeah, that's I mean that's what okay. it is. Okay. Like, like, yeah. See it against the walls. Yeah. Uh, oh, see. Oh, hold on. Like if you can move your hand right here so that he could see that. I think that might be eggs yes. from some some creature. Yeah. So we'll look into another plant. Yeah. Another plant. So we actually just ch chatted with uh, the gardener who actually manages this area here in the succulents. And he was saying that uh, the root mealybug is actually one of the most common pestiferous insects that he finds in the succulents that he manages here. Um, but he hasn't been able to find one. So he said he'll come and get us if he actually finds one. And we just said, you know, just his luck, he won't be able to find one <laughs> today. But look, like they have gravel under here. It's kind of neat. I remember being having more under the bench plants, but you could see the, there's this like, I think a monodium or a, like probably a euphorbia kind of like got snuck under there. But um, very interesting to see how they have this, you know, with the gravel in their separate terracotta pots, very easy to kind of manage. And um, very neat to see how he was managing some of the plants back there. So let's, let's move on to the tropical house. Okay, let's see it. Just when we thought. So, see this? Yeah, oh yeah, you so, can see those like white see haze. All the container? Oh yeah. So this is the sort of a... The white haziness right here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it all depends on the plant, you know, yeah. like uh, something so has more... This is on a colincoe, huh? This is huh? on a colincoe, yeah. yeah. I don't see, I mean, I've never oh, seen Oh, and any even around here. Yes. Yeah. So this Kalanko, I never see any mealy on its stems or leaves. Yeah. It's always in the roots. With some mealy, it's mainly on their stem. Yeah. So it's like, it, whatever it is, like, you know, how they find it interesting. Yeah. To sort of, uh, uh, so anyway, this one is pretty bad. I mean, this yeah. is like a... Yeah. You want to see in here? So let me get this out. Yeah. 
You, you can actually play with it if you want. Yeah, <laughs> I can play with it? Oh, that's fantastic. We don't take any home, though. Oh, no, I won't. I don't want to. I, <laughs> oh, careful, though. I know. Yeah, she might do well, No, but I don't want to dam I don't want to damage my plants with well, all these rumeli bugs. <laughs> I think he just stuffed some cotton down here, and he said, I found it. <laughs> so it's that white stuff on the rim? Yeah, the white stuff, any of this kind of powdery yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm going to do with this. Yeah, well, thank you so much for showing us that. Is, yeah, was that a Kalanchoe Bractea? Yeah, 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 okay, awesome. Stay tuned for the next episode because we venture into the other wing of Wave Hills Conservatory, which houses the tropicals. And if you'd like to see more field trips like this, then you can let us know in the comments below. And if you didn't hear yet, we're launching a brand new channel next month called Flock Finger Lakes, where we're documenting our journey on a new homestead. So if you'd like, you could tap on the subscribe and notifications button so you know when the first videos go live. We're looking forward to seeing you there.